Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I'm very excited to bring you my top DIYs using paint sticks and or craft sticks. These are some of my most popular projects and I have four brand new projects for you today as well. So I hope you'll sit back, grab something to drink and enjoy these DIYs. Our first project for today is this paint stick serving tray. I'm going to use three three packs of the five gallon paint sticks, some nautical rope, some mineral chalk paint, wood glue, and a stencil from a maker's studio. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark off on all three packages where I'm going to use my miter, box, and saw to trim off that indented section of each of the packs of paint sticks. Then we're going to take seven of the paint sticks and lay them out using another paint stick to space them out. And then the other two paint sticks we're going to use on the back to attach all of the seven paint sticks together to make our tray. My other two paint sticks, I'm gonna go ahead and cut at about 11 inches. You can see I'm marking that there. And those will be pieces that we then glue on the back, the two 11 inch pieces on the two outer edges. And then those smaller pieces I cut off, I went ahead and just put those diagonally in the center to give a little more stability. Now, once our wood glue is all dry, I am taking a little bit of water and mixing some of my mineral chalk paint just to make it more of a gray wash instead of a solid paint. So you'll still be able to see the wood green through the gray paint there. Once that's completely dry on the front and the back, I'm taking one of my word stencils from a maker studio. The link is in the description box. And I'm just going to chalk paste one of these letters down here, or one of these words down on the bottom right. These are reusable stencils. They're awesome, they're a triple mesh. So you get a really nice, crisp looking stencil. I just decided to do the word thankful. This could be used any time of year. And you just take the little spreader spread it in there, pressing it into the mesh. And then once you have that all done, you'll just go ahead and peel up the stencil and you'll see the nice image. And there it is. Now taking some of my nautical rope from Dollar Tree, I'm cutting two pieces that are about this same length. I would guess they're about eight inches. I am using some hot glue to uh, seal up the ends so that they don't fray on me and give, just give me a nice surface to work with. Now flipping our tray over, you can see I'm going to attach the nautical rope handles there on the third um, paint stick in from either end, just kind of right there in the center and I have it butted up against that cross piece. We'll go ahead and do that on both sides. And then once our glue is dried, we're also gonna come back in with a staple gun just for extra stability in case you are going to be carrying things on this tray. Two staples in each side of the rope and that should be good to go. Now I did notice when I finished this and flipped it over, a couple of the staples had kind of come through just a tiny bit. So I just took my little hammer and flattened those so that they weren't sticking up and it was nice and flat. So here is our finished first project, our little paint stick serving tray that cost us just over $3 to make when you include the nautical rope. 
DIY number two is going to be a hexagon wall shelf made out of craft sticks. For this one, I'm going to use the jumbo craft sticks. You could also use giant or any super size. They've got a bunch of different sizes at Walmart. These are the jumbo, like I said. I believe they're about six inches long. So what I did is I printed out a hexagon on my computer and we're going to make layers on this using hot glue. You could use wood glue if you're gonna put something heavy in it, but basically you're gonna do three sticks at a time. So you saw I did every other, and then I went back and did the other three spaces on top. Now you're gonna do top, right, and left, then put more glue and do top left, top right, and bottom. I used 72 craft sticks to make 12 layers. You can see, of course, you can make this however thick you want. Now, after I glued it all together, I did take my truffle chalk paint, and this does take a little bit of time to get it in all those spaces. So you may decide to paint all your sticks ahead of time. I actually think this is faster. I wanted a backing for my shelf, so I took some of this six inch, pretty thick burlap ribbon, and I'm just going to hot glue two pieces across the back of my hexagon just to give it a nice background. So put that on both sides, and then I did put a little bit of hot glue on the inside, just down the center where the two pieces overlap a little bit and then just go ahead and trim off your extra all the way around. Of course, you could use your hexagon wall shelf to display anything you'd like. You can make multiples of them and hang them together. I decided to fill the bottom half of this one with some of the succulents from Dollar Tree. Some of them I kept in the little plastic container. Others I took out and just kind of filled in spaces. So however you like, and I just think this turned out so super cute. I love the succulents, and the shelf was so quick to make. DIY number three, we're going to upscale some tin cans into vases. I'm going to use that same size of craft stick and three different sizes of cans that I've been saving to repurpose. So to cover up the shiny metal, I just did one coat of my white Waverly chalk paint on each of my cans and let those dry. Then taking some of those craft sticks, I did go ahead and just cut off the rounded end and then I'm gonna hold it up to my can to see where I need to cut it to make it fit the height of the can. So I'm gonna do, I believe it was 14 of these sticks to go around the tallest can, which is just a regular like soup can size. And then with my other sticks, I was able to use one stick to cut for the size of both of my smaller cans. I hope that made sense, but just take the sticks you have and measure them and cut them. They cut real easily with scissors. Now I'm taking my sticks for each can and dividing them in half. I decided I'm going to do half of the sticks with the antique wax and leave the other half just the plain wood just to give a two-toned effect. Then just taking a generous amount of hot glue, I'm lining those up as straight as possible on my can and just gluing them all the way around, going every other of the dark antique wax and the plain wood. I just love how simple and high-end these looked once I had the craft sticks on there. Then just take a little bit of floral foam, any florals that you want, um, and just hot glue a little of that floral foam in the bottom 
and then add your florals. These would look super cute as a trio. You could change the florals out seasonally. I also think these would make really cute caddies for um, pencils or paint brushes on a desk or craft table. Um, you could put a bunch of them together for your plastic utensils for picnics. Just the possibilities are endless. I just love repurposing things like tin cans and other things that normally would end up in the trash. DIY number four was super fun to make for our patio. This is an Our Patio Rules sign. I'm going to use six packs of the five gallon paint sticks, six of those chalkboards from Dollar Tree, um, some of the rectangular wood slats from either Dollar Tree or Walmart, some poster letters, and some jute twine and paint. I do not end up using those wood frames. Okay, six packages will give you 18 paint sticks. And these are 98 cents a pack at Lowe's or Home Depot. What you're going to do is we are going to paint all of them white. Now I only show painting 14 of them white, but do yourself a favor and just go ahead and paint all 18 of them white and you'll see why in a minute. So with 14 of them, I'm going to lay them out kind of staggered like this for the quote unquote fence. And then four of them will be going across the back in different ways just to hold them all together. You can see that's how we're going to glue it. I did add a few extra pieces just to go all the way across. Now here's what I mean about painting all of them white. Do you see the ones on the bottom? Those are the four I didn't paint white. Go ahead and paint them all white from the beginning. Glue your fence together and then I'm taking some elephant chalk paint and I'm dry brushing just to give our fence a little bit of a worn um, look. And then taking three of these rectangular wood slats, I'm going to give these all three a coat of elephant chalk paint as well. Once the elephant chalk paint is dry, go ahead and dry brush some white over the top again we want this to look kind of worn like it's been out in the yard for quite a while so dry brush that then taking our poster letters i'm going to spell out the words our patio rules of course if you want this on your porch if that's where you hang out you can change patio to porch no problem and then go ahead and Mod Podge over those just to make sure our letters stay on as this will be outside. And then that's what they look like all dried. Now with our six chalkboards, I'm gonna first use pencil and you can find lots of things to write on porch rules or patio rules. You can see I'm using different fonts of writing. I have relax, enjoy the view, listen to the birds, make memories, read a book, and sip a drink. So here's going over them one time with my white paint marker and then again to make it nice and bold. Now I'm going to attach these to my fence using a combination of fix-all adhesive and hot glue. That's for our three signs that say our patio rules and also for the six quote unquote rules. Once everything is glued on, I'm taking some of this thicker jute twine from Walmart, doubling it over and I'm just gonna knot it on either side around one of my cross pieces to make a way to hang this sign and make it nice and stable. Hot glue those knots to make sure they don't work themselves out and then trim off any extra twine. And this is what the sign looks like. And this is what it looks like hanging on the outside of our house right there at our patio. If you're new to my channel and you love budget home decor, I really hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button and hit the bell so YouTube will notify you each time I upload new content. 
DIY number five is super easy to make and very versatile. You're gonna use some sort of sign in the middle and then four of the five gallon paint sticks. I show here a placemat and some other ideas of what you could use. So the first thing you'll wanna do is cut all four of your sticks at about 13 inches. It'll depend on how wide your sign is that will be in the middle. Now I'm gonna give all four of these a coat of the antique wax, even though two of them I had already painted for something else. Now using a placemat, you could cut that center section out and make a sign of it. If you did this, I would probably get rid of the shine with a spray or something like that. But I decided to use one of these cork sheets that I have from Dollar Tree. And I had these vinyl letters, I've had them forever from a craft kit. So I'm gonna make the word home and use one of these rub-ons from Dollar Tree as well. You could stencil words or letters on your sign, or again, just use a placemat from Dollar Tree, whatever you want for your sign in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this vinyl down. I did find I had to work a little harder to get it to stick to the cork, probably just because of the type of porous surface that it is. These rub-ons are awesome too from Crafter Square. Even if you don't use this kind, I think they're probably all gonna work about the same and I think they stick really well. So I loved the natural look of this with the cork and the greenery there and just the simplicity of the word. Now with my four pieces of paint stick, we're going to kind of frame out this sign, but only at the top and the bottom. So you can see I'm just gonna glue a tiny little bit of the cork at the bottom there to the center of the paint stick, just right on the edge, getting that lined up as straight as possible. Then go ahead and put hot glue again on the top of the um, cork there at the very bottom. And then I also did some hot glue on the paint stick. And now we're going to sandwich that sign between our two paint sticks, just get those lined up. And it makes a really cool wood frame at the top and bottom. So go ahead and do the exact same thing with the top piece and here's what you have. Then we're just gonna use some jute twine from Dollar Tree, tie a knot on either end, put the knot at the back, and then go ahead and hot glue it into place to make a little hanger for your sign. and here's how it turned out. Again, I love this project because it's simple and you can make this for any occasion. These would be great to give as housewarming gifts using any of the placemats or signs from Dollar Tree. DIY number six is going to be a craft stick sunburst mirror using 20 of these giant craft sticks from Walmart, four different colors of chalk paint and one of these mirrors from Dollar Tree. So what I'm doing here, these I believe are about 10 inches. I'm gonna cut 20 of them in half at five inches. So this will give me 40 pieces of craft stick. Then taking my four colors of paint, I'm dividing those 40 pieces into five piles and I'm going to paint eight of them, each of these colors. So eight with the antique wax, eight with pool blue, eight white, and eight mineral, and then eight I'm leaving just the natural wood color. Then coming to your mirror, taking the backing out and the mirror, I'm gonna go ahead and lighten up this mirror frame by giving it kind of a messy uh, paint job with my white chalk paint. It's okay if a little bit of the black shows through. Now once that's dry, you can go ahead and put the mirror back in, and then we're going to start gluing our craft sticks around 
the back of the frame. So I'm making sure to mix up the colors, but I started with north, south, east, and west just to get these spaced out as evenly as possible. Then do one in between all of those. And then you can see here what it looks like when we had the eight. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in the rest around there. I just love this. And this went into our beachy bathroom downstairs. Of course, adding the nautical rope just kind of finished the whole thing off. And then the mirror does have a little hangy tab on the back, so you already have that to be able to hang this really fun mirror. Now you could do this with any colors, any type of theme, but this turned out so cute and really did not cost maybe two to three dollars to make. DIY 7 is just a really simple rustic hanging photo display. I'm going to use four of the five gallon paint sticks, some of these small wood clothespins, some jute twine, and some antique wax. So here I'm just kind of showing you, I'm gonna do two big craft sticks, and then I'm going to cut two of them. Once I cut the little handle off, then I'm gonna cut those in half. So here you can see I have my two long craft sticks, and then I'm going to space out the four smaller pieces across to make three little sections. And I'm gonna glue those down with wood glue and then once they're dry, flip the display over and I'm gonna take three small pieces of jute twine. I'm gonna put a knot on either end just to um, hot glue that down. And I would say I'm gluing the twine maybe an inch down, half inch to an inch down um, in the space there. You can see what I'm gonna do. And then glue the other side across. And you can see you've got three little twines there that you can then stick two clothespins on and be able to clip up some pictures. So this I made with one pack, or sorry, four crafts, four paint sticks. So two packs, so that's $2 plus the twine and clothespins. And here you can see three pics of my little kids when they were small. But this is just very simple. You could of course decorate this with florals or greenery or whatever you'd like. DIY number eight is going to be a long wooden box with some succulent buckets. And I'm going to, again, use four of the five gallon paint sticks. I'm also going to use 10 tumbling tower blocks. So opening up my paint sticks here, again, I only need four. So I'm just kind of um, cutting off that rounded edge again. I just think it gives it a much cleaner look. And then the ends of my box are going to be tumbling tower blocks. So at first you're going to see me glue two sets of four, but then I realize once I'm putting it together that those need to be two sets of five. So just using wood glue, glue your tumbling tower block sets together and let those dry completely. And then for the wood box itself with the paint sticks, we're just going to use some wood glue on the edges and glue those four paint sticks together. Once the bottom section of our box is dry, go ahead and glue your sets of five tumbling tower blocks on each of the smaller ends of the box and let those dry completely. And then we can add our side paint stick on either side, gluing it to the bottom piece and then also to the tumbling tower blocks. I love this box and how inexpensive and easy it is to make. You can make it whatever size you want. But what I decided to do for this one is take six of these little white buckets from the wedding section at Dollar Tree 
and six of the succulents. You can see I'm just taking the foam right out of the plastic container, putting a little bit of the floral moss on top, and then sticking the succulent back in. It just elevates the look, gives it a little bit more of a high-end look. I'm just gonna sand off any little glue spots on my box, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint my box with my Truffle Waverly Chalk Paint. This would also look really pretty with the antique wax, or even painted white, or even left the natural wood color. Last step is just to put your six buckets in with your succulents, and you have a finished, beautiful, high-end looking decor piece. For DIY number nine, we're going to use one package of the five gallon paint sticks, some sort of sign either from a calendar or printed online, and some antique wax and hot glue. So the, what I'm gonna do here, I was inspired by the fall um, picture in this calendar, but you can find nice printables online for free. So I kind of went along with the eight and a half by 11 size and using one pack of crafts or paint sticks i'm going to use two for the legs and then cut the third one but first i'm going to go ahead and do all three with the antique wax now kind of using my eight and a half by 11 page as a guide i'm figuring out where i need to cut my third paint stick and that's going to fit at the top and the bottom now I wanted some sort of background, so I'm using a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut this, you saw me measure. I'm gonna cut a rectangle that will fit behind everything. This is going to be a background that you can then change out whatever picture you put inside, kind of like a picture frame, but without the glass or the plastic on the front. So here I'm starting with the left long piece of paint stick and gluing both that left one and right one down. And then using my smaller pieces, I'm fitting the one at the top there. And then before I glue down that bottom one, I'm gonna fit our eight and a half by 11 in there and kind of move everything around while that wood glue or yeah, tacky glue or wood glue is still wet and get everything lined up before we glue in our bottom spot. Now I decided to make this be able to stand up. I was going to use one of these dowels. I believe you can get these at Walmart. I've just had this one forever. And it kind of is going to indent into the foam board and we're going to hot glue that in so that we can make our easel be able to stand up. And here it is with the pumpkin spice and everything nice. I believe I just tacked that in with some tape and then you could change that out for any season or holiday. For DIY number 10, we're going to be making some wood box wall sconces using eight of the one gallon paint sticks and two of the inside wood boxes from these wood drawers from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to go ahead and take all eight of my one gallon paint sticks and my two boxes and give them a coat of our Waverly Antique Wax. I just, you guys know I love this stuff. I just think it makes everything look so high end and it's so easy to use and doesn't smell like yucky stain. So I'm gonna take some of these giant craft sticks and cut them in halves so that I can glue them across the back of my paint sticks here to make them all stay together. So three pieces on the back of each. Then taking my square ruler, I'm going to wood glue and I believe hot glue these small little wood boxes to the paint sticks so that the cut out there, the flower is against and you're not going to see that. Just get that in the center as best as you can and do that to both of your sets. Then I have these little book brackets that look like they're from a card catalog. I believe I got these on Amazon. They should be in my Amazon storefront. And just using some E6000, gluing those on the front to elevate the look even more. 
Now I'm just going to add some floral foam and some florals into my little sconces. You could put little jars with candles, whatever you want to do to modify this for your home and your decor. The last step is just to take some jute twine and go in and out of the little indents on our paint sticks to make a way to hang up our wall sconces. These are very lightweight, so the jute twine is going to work just fine. And these turned out so beautiful, and I love things that you can change out for the season. Like I said, you could put candles in here with jars, and they would look absolutely beautiful. DIY 11 is a paint stick calendar sign. We're going to use 15 of the one gallon paint sticks, some images from a calendar, some Mod Podge, and some jute twine. So what I have here is I have 12 of the one gallon paint sticks laying down, and then I'm gonna take three more and glue them across the back to hold everything together. So this is one and a half packages of the one gallon paint sticks, so $1.50. I decided to do the back with my ink, just make it all black on the back to cover up the ruler markings. And then the entire front of my sign and the edges will be the antique wax. Brush it on and wipe off the excess for a beautiful finished look. Now you could do this with any images from the calendars at Dollar Tree or anything you print online. I'm gonna do a layer of Mod Podge pretty much over the entire front of our sign and then spritz my image with water and lay that down, get it all smoothed out on the center of our paint stick sign. Now attaching a piece of jute twine to the back, we're going to wrap it, oh, I think I went about five or six times to cover up that space between where the calendar image and the paint stick um, signs line up. It just gives it a nice frame. I did both sides and the top and bottom with a beautiful finished look. Our next project is a shiplap beach rope sign. I'm using a thrift store frame, the one gallon paint sticks, some of the white cotton beachy rope, and some of those same beach type colors of chalk paint. Now, I lucked out that this frame was exactly 12 inches, so these one gallon paint sticks fit really nicely. So I would say look for a frame that makes it easy, and here I'm just putting them in so I know how many paint sticks I will need to fill the entire back of this frame. So it looks like I needed 23 and this is how I'm dividing them up to paint them with the elephant, pool, mineral, white, and antique wax. Once those are all dry, I'm just using hot glue and again, fitting those back in. I've already kind of arranged them so that when they go in, they're gonna be a nice mixture of colors, kind of like on the sunburst mirror. I think you can also see I'm doing them every other way so that all of those little notches are not all at the top or all at the bottom. And here's what it looks like when they are all in, covering the back of the frame. And then I just took the piece of rope and spelled out the word beach. Again, you could make this say whatever you want and use whatever colors to give that shiplap look to your sign. This also went into our beach bathroom, which there you can see it hanging on the wall.
For DIY 13, we're going to make a mini ladder with a wreath. We're going to use two packages of the five gallon paint sticks, one package of the one gallon paint sticks. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sticks apart and on the one gallon paint sticks, I did cut the indented part off and separated those into two sets of five. Now with all three paint sticks for one package of the five gallons, we are using wood glue to glue those all together to make one solid piece. We're gonna do this with both sets and then with five of the one gallon sticks in two sets, we're going to glue those all together. So again, we've only used two packs of the five gallon and one pack of the one gallon glued them together to make these four pieces. Now, if I was gonna make this again, I maybe would make one more rung. Um, so one more set of five one gallon paint stick pieces, but this is how I made it. So this is what I'm showing you. Then I'm just gonna use wood glue to glue those pieces together after I've painted them the color of my choice. And this is truffle. So here we're going to let that dry. And while we do, I'm going to use another repurposed item. This is from one of those holiday popcorn tins. I'm just using the metal part of the tin and I'm going to make this into a wreath. I'm just hot gluing some of the moss on the front and the sides and getting that all filled in. And then I'm just gonna use some of these little white, I think these were little cherry blossoms from Dollar Tree. I was maybe gonna just bend the stem, but it kind of looked weird. So just gluing on the individual blossoms. Again, use whatever florals you want or just the greenery. And then I'm just gonna tie this around the top rung of my ladder using some of this black and white gingham ribbon, I believe, which was from Hobby Lobby. And here it is. I think these mini ladders are so, so cute for displaying anything you'd like. DIY number 14, we're going to make a hanging flower box. We're going to use 16 of the one gallon paint sticks, so not quite two full packages, some nautical rope or jute twine, and some glue. So here I'm going to take the 16 sticks and again, using some mineral chalk paint, watering it down as kind of a gray wash. We're gonna go ahead and paint the front sides of all 16 of the sticks. Now we're only going to use 14 to make the actual box. And then the other two we're gonna cut apart at these places to make these smaller pieces to glue on the back. So you can see there, I'm gluing five sticks together two sticks, five sticks, and two sticks, and this is what we'll use to create our flower box. Now, I'm just using hot glue. Of course, you could use wood glue to make this a little sturdier, but you can see how I'm gluing the two smaller sides to the set of five, and then we'll glue that other set of five on the top. I realized here I was probably going to need something for the bottom of the box, so I just took another couple pieces of paint stick and fit those in the bottom there just to make it closed at the bottom. Then adding some more of the paint just around any edges that are showing, we're going to finish up the painting and then we'll be able to add a jute twine to the back in order to be able to hang it. Again, those little notches in the paint sticks do come in handy sometimes. You can just fish that jute twine in and out and then tie it in a knot to be able to hang the box. Then just go ahead and add whatever florals you'd like and hang this 
wherever you'd like as well. Our last project, we're going to be making these mini palettes out of one gallon paint sticks. You'll need 16 paint sticks for each palette you're going to make. Whatever paint or antique wax you want and then anything you want to decorate with. So here I have 16 sticks. I'm going to use antique wax and just do the front side and all of the edges on all 16 of those and then let those dry completely. And here's two sets of 16 sticks, all dried and ready to go. Now, don't make this mistake. See those three I have going horizontally? Flip them over so that they are the painted side. Okay, that's one thing I learned doing this. Then I'm gonna make three pairs that are glued together like you saw me do there. I have two glued together for the left side, two more glued together, and these will go on the right side. And then we'll glue two more together and that will be the center. So these are your way that your two layers of your palette are separated from each other. But again, those three going across the bottom, flip them over so they're the painted side. All right, so now using hot glue or wood glue, we're going to line up those three horizontal sticks and glue this set of two standing up on its edge. We're gonna do that on this right side, the left side, and in the middle. Now with your last seven sticks, you're gonna line them up perfectly on those top, middle, and bottom ones, and then space two between the bottom two and two between the top two. Once you have them spaced out how you want them, just go ahead and glue them in place. And this is what my two mini palettes look like decorated with some succulents. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help me to grow my channel and be able to bring you new content. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks again, everyone. And please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite. I always love to know which ones you're going to try to make yourself and how you're going to change them up for your style and your decor. Take care.